this city and strive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty with the wind blowing in your hair. We can look back someday. So another step in this journey to basically get our house ready for winter off-grid is burying the line that's running underneath the house. All the other important water lines have been buried. The only thing that is left is the one that's directly under the house and then of course the one to the greenhouse but that's not as important. There's a few different ways we can go about doing this but obviously we want to try the easiest and the fastest first. So this is our current situation for underneath the house water lines. In an ideal world, when all this is done, the main water line is going to be buried, everything's going to be insulated, we're going to have a pump house, and everything's going to be enclosed. So, today is the first step of that. Plan A is to try to build this trencher tool out of scrap materials we have laying around. Cody's going to tack weld it and then I'm going to practice my welds since it is just a tool. Now Cody's gonna weld on a hook so we have a way to pull it with the tractor. This is going to be a test. So we want to try to keep this main water line underneath the house because we'll already have our pump house and filter system and all that right here. And from right here to over there is the shortest distance possible. It'll also help keep it better insulated than if we were to keep it outside. So. It's a slow process, but honestly, I'm not even mad. It's working and I don't have to dig by hand. I just get to ride a shovel all day, all summer drives. I'm super excited to have these water lines done because even though we may not have everything that we want done for winter, we'll definitely feel a lot better going into winter knowing that we don't really have to worry about water freezing anymore. Homes really are not that different in the way that they work and run and plumbing. Our home is definitely a lot more simpler, especially since it's a one bedroom, but essentially our home works just the same as any other home. Once you have all of your lemons cut, it's time to start pouring it all together. Simple syrup, which is literally equal parts water sugar. And then just a couple jars of filtered water, cold filtered water. Give her a good old mixeroo. Awesome. And now you have lemonade that'll probably last a good old maybe two hours in this household. Time to get back at it. The tractor has this lovely feature, which basically is horrible for me. What does it do, babe? 
it's a safety sensor so if you fall out or you know tip over or something it kills the motor well it's based on weight on the seat and summer doesn't weigh enough to keep that sensor always pushed down so cody is going to tape it basically this whole process is back and forth back and forth back and forth underneath the house um, and i'm pulling him on the tractor going back and forth back and forth so for the tractor to constantly be shutting off it's quite an inconvenience um, and can get quite annoying so this will hopefully help that Spur of the moment tool worked pretty well actually. Uh, I'd say we're about a foot deep in our trench so far and I haven't dug at all. We have literally just been pulling this from under the house. However, on the last couple pulls we started to hit some roots and the front of the shovel was bending forward and actually tore the whole metal right there. All the welds are still intact on the other side, but the sheet metal itself just ripped basically. I'm gonna add a support. I just have a piece of angle left from something else. I'm going to weld right there so that'll reinforce the front and it'll also help push dirt kind of up and away so it won't get clogged so bad. Ideally if we could have like a point that would be the best but I'm just using scrap metal that I found laying around. So it's getting the job done but we got to do some upgrades and we're going to get back to it in the morning. Okay, so we got everything hooked up outside to watch a movie, but we feel gross and we want to eat. So we're going to have dinner and a movie outside, but we're going to shower first. So, see y'all in a few. We're clean. I'm full from dinner and exhausted now. Well, let's go watch a movie. Also, I would have posted dinner, but a few people said that they were not a fan of cooking in our videos. So I'm going to try to pull back a little bit on cooking, um, so totally understandable. There's a few more things that we need to pick up from the hardware store before we can officially hook up the line. And there's obviously just a little bit more digging. So we'll see y'all in the morning. clip y'all saw I woke up at like whatever time y'all saw on Cody's phone I think it was like 6 45 I don't know and I thought the generator was on because it was so loud and I was just like why the hell is the generator on it's 6 in the morning who turned the generator on what the heck and so I get up and I look out the window because nobody like there's nobody here so there's a few times I've woken up and I thought like I've heard the garbage man and I'm like summer you don't live in the city anymore you live in the woods and I look outside and it's literally pouring rain and I'm like oh shit. we have a crap ton of stuff outside so I quickly woke Cody up and he ran out there I did not he did <laughs> now it's the morning we're going to make coffee and just kind of reassess the situation and what we need to do because our welder got poured on so we can't really use it and also Maya dug holes under the house so it's wet under the house now First thing before I can be alive though is I need coffee. Truly alive, I guess. Let's go. 
let's go check on the girls. Good morning, girls. Did Dad not give you any new water yet? Was there a lot of loud rain last night? Morning grains for breakfast, and then as typically when we get their pool cleaned out for the day. Summer cuts up some vegetables and greens and all that to throw in there. It's so cute watching them eat lettuce, but you don't want to give them like. They can't have romaine lettuce. Yeah, no, no, no. They can't have romaine <coughs> lettuce. You don't want to give them iceberg. Oh, lettuce. iceberg. Yeah. Because iceberg has like no traditional, no traditional has no um, nutritional, nutritional value. Yeah. <laughs> iceberg lettuce has no nutritional value. So romaine, um, spinach, kale, things like that. We also give them celery, carrots, apples without the core, um, cucumber. They really love carrots. You can see where it's all washed through. Yeah, we need to go up to Lowe's and get uh, some material anyway. I thought I had enough fittings for the water line because I have like a box of fittings and uh, don't have the right ones. Uh, our last, I guess, mechanical outlet from the filter system is a three quarter male thread and then we're going to a one inch line. So we need a three quarter female to a one inch male. Mm -hmm and then we'll be able to hook it all up. And then I also need to get a one inch shut off valve because I forgot that. So guess what, everybody's favorite, we're not finishing a project, sorry. But it doesn't really have to dry because he can, he can obviously get under there and we can keep working, but do I want him to be forced to get under the house and be miserable with a whole bunch of mud? I mean, no. it's nice because it'll soften the ground up a little bit and make it a little easier to dig, but at the same time, I don't want to go roll around in the mud. I think we're going to pause on this, work on it tomorrow when it has a little bit longer to dry. Of course, now that the season's almost over, my basil is... The basil's freaking huge, man. ...growing strong, especially like right when I'm about to pull her out and put her somewhere different. Well, we still got some new tomatoes coming. I say I saw little babies popping up. One little tiny nub. But I think my jalapeno plant's pretty much done yeah, for the year. Yeah, jalapenos are done. I'm real worried about the two and a quarter yellow bell peppers we're gonna get. These are not growing very well either. Lions are looking great and long. This one's starting, I can see, to start turning, but the rest of them have not even began to turn, so I guess we'll check on those later. However, and guess what? We brought it back to life! Oh my gosh! So. Yeah, we're starting to get a ton of cherry tomatoes. And look how big this sucker is. Dude, That's almost huge. like a normal tomato. It's huge. And yeah. my mint is finally growing, which I'm excited. Oh, Literally, I've There been... wasn't a plant there like three days yeah. ago. I've been trying to grow this mint for probably, what, like two months easy? Yeah. Yeah. And finally. And my pumpkins are getting big. Yep, those are going to get moved. Yeah, we're going to have to spread them out. They're getting too big. They're going to crowd each other. This week we're going to start working on adding in planter boxes and then picking through our winter veggies. So I don't know if y'all remember a couple videos ago, Cody bought me a whole bunch of packs of vegetable seeds and now I need to figure out which winter veggies I want to plant in our greenhouse. And yes, we will have it completely covered before, you know, first snow and first freeze and all that. Yeah, we got probably about a month left. Yeah. Well, before it starts getting cold. Yeah. The end of this video is so chaotic. Like, I feel so bad because we were supposed to actually do stuff. And it was going to be a good, full video of working. And now it's just muddy as crap outside. So, sorry about that. Anyways, let's do some questions. <laughs> Sandy North says, since the preppers are all talking about blackouts, did you guys think or buy a wood stove? Check out Deep South Homestead and South Prepper 1 and Simple Life Reclaimed are doing the same thing same thing you two are uh yeah we actually did build the house uh for a wood stove we have right behind y'all <laughs> yeah literally right behind where the camera is there's a uh, chimney ducting and all that hookup for a wood stove on the inside of the house so we take it out during the summer because obviously we don't need a stove in the summer and it's a small house so we could use the space for other stuff we are looking into getting a new wood stove. There's a really nice one that I want that has like a built-in oven and a hot water coil. So anytime we have a fire going, we can use it as an oven or it'll keep our hot or our water hot and all kinds of good stuff. So 
Um, that's the one I want to get, so hopefully we'll be upgrading soon, but yes, we do have a wood stove. We purchased one from Rural King last year, and it served its purpose really well, and then we were transporting it to storage, and it fell off the tractor, and so some of the legs broke. So we could definitely fix it, and she would do well this year, but I think we're just going to go ahead and upgrade for multiple reasons. We want a bigger cooktop. Um, I don't want it so far wide. I want it more, I don't know how to explain this. It was more of a hot dog and I want a hamburger, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But yeah, we love freestanding fireplaces. It was definitely a worry of mine. I was quite scared of them at first. And now that we've had one, I'm like, ooh, I love this thing and I want it every year because that thing can put out some heat. Mm -hmm. So, and that was also an issue that we had with the original one that we bought that it was smaller and it wasn't very efficient mm -hmm. so it would only burn for about four hours before all the wood would be gone and you'd have to restock it so yeah. new one that we're looking at can burn for I think it was like nine to 13 hours or something like that whenever you you know pack it full and then close the dampers and basically just kind of choke it and make it burn really slow so I'm so sorry I'm gonna mispronounce your last name and I, I'm just apologizing for now. Chris, louder, 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 louder. It's louder without the O. It's louder or louder. What is the singer's name in the intro in your background music? So I use a few different um, singers, but the one that is most frequently in my intro, um, and I'm actually gonna change our intro in the next couple weeks, but I'm using the same artist, is Cody Francis. I really like his music hot. Cody. I don't think I ever put those I didn't together. Know that. When we first started doing YouTube, I was looking up obviously like um, subscriptions that I can purchase for free music. I use Epidemic Sound. Um, it's just the first one that I came across, and I like it. We'll probably eventually change it to you know get new varieties of music, but I just kind of clicked with his music, and that's what we use. Oh gosh, now I'm gonna mispronounce this last name. <clears throat> Sorry y'all, we really try. If you're gonna ask a question and you know that you're like your last name is just it might be butchered, put, <laughs> put in the pronunciation so we can learn. Kevin Deltano? I'm sorry, I hope that's right. I feel like it's like Italian and I'm, we're just saying it's so white. <laughs> yeah, probably. Kevin Deltano says, Do you need inspections before occupancy where you are building your container house? Uh, let me think back. We did not need... Yes and no. Yes and no. We we had a fire inspection. It pretty much just consisted of him making sure that we had our fire blocking in the right places. And he took his little GFCI tester and tested yeah. that letter too, to make sure that they worked. But that was about it. And then, uh, so, so as far as the house itself goes, we literally just had the fire inspection for, I guess, being able to live here in general. We had to have a septic inspection. Um, Missouri doesn't really care if you're living in a shoebox. However, they do care where your poop is going from that shoebox. They are big conservation state. Yeah, big yeah. conservation state. Big state. conservation state. Actually, I don't know if y'all know, but or I guess most people don't know this, but the majority of other states' conservation departments were actually based on Missouri. Missouri was the first state mm -hmm. to make a conservation department based on science. But yeah. We had to have fire inspection yeah. <laughs> and we had to have a septic inspection, but those are literally the only two things. The last thing that I kind of wanted to talk to y'all about on here is what are y'all enjoying seeing? What do y'all wish that we would pull back on? Because I thoroughly enjoy cooking, Cody thoroughly enjoys working on projects. We like to film both, but we get mixed feedback. I know that y'all want to see a lot more mechanical stuff, so we've been trying to throw a lot more of that in there. But I kind of just wanted to get y'all's opinion on what y'all enjoy seeing and what y'all want to see more of. Um, because obviously we wouldn't be here without y'all, so we want to keep y'all happy. For sure. So if you want to throw some opinions in the comments, I always read those. We literally read every comment. We may not have the opportunity to respond back to all of them, but we do. But we do read everyone. Every single one of them. Well, sorry about the weird cut off crappy video this week, but it'll be better in the next video because we definitely have a lot of stuff to do. Mm -hmm. It is getting cold fast. And, and we got paid! Oh my gosh, y'all. We've been waiting on getting paid for like probably like three weeks. You know, we paid all our bills, but we didn't. I paid all our bills knowing that I wasn't going to have money for projects um, because, you know, projects cost money. And we finally got paid, so we have things to work on now, which is really exciting uh, because it's been kind of a. Yeah, a couple weeks, so. See you in the next one. See you in the next one. <laughs> <laughs>